Oh my god. He on X Games mud. Oh my god. We gonna no rock. Come to Electric Avenue. You're gonna, you're gonna take, take me higher. higher. Three, two, one. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Burn Down. Today's episode is a fan favorite. We're just gonna be shooting the breeze. Coming up next on The Burn Down. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another f***ing episode of The oh Burndown. God, he's so I'm aggressive. Gl- I'm hyped. He's aggressive. Hyped. Your cursing scares Dude, me. Dude, I'm on X Games, mug. Oh, my God. He on X Games, mug. <laughs> oh, my God. He on X Games, mug. <laughs> Welcome back to The Burndown. Today's episode is shooting the good old shit. Fan favorite from BDPers. People just love when we shoot the breeze, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So uh, it's a fan favorite, and honestly, it makes it things it makes things a little bit easier for us because we don't have to think so hard about an episode. Yeah, we just kind of rattle off. I ask you what you what you're doing, you ask me what I'm doing, and it turns into a good episode. Bada bang, bada boom, bam, bam. So <laughs> what was that? Bada bang, bada bam, boom, bam. Oh, it's a Petey Pablo. I think it's a, I think it's a Petey Pablo uh, reference. Oh, I thought you were trying to say bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> no, bada bing, bada boom, boom, bam. Love it. If I'm correct, it's from uh, the song Freak a Leak by Petey Pablo. Freak a Leak. How yeah. you like it? Yep, Daddy. exactly. Good job. Good I fucking love it. Good All reference. right, we're gonna dive right in. So we are smoking, um, courtesy of CigarAndPipes.com. Our boy. Now, great brand right here. Yeah. Definitely some stronger smokes for the seasoned vets of cigar smoking. We are smoking the Salutation by Black Label Trading Company. And then if I know anything about Black Label Trading Company, which I don't know much of, but one thing I do know about them is that they pack, they pack, they punk, they pack a mother effing punch. punch. Oh, that's, you want to talk about packing a punch? They sent us one even stronger than this. Yes, they did. They sent us. I wasn't even trying. I didn't even recognize it because it came in a different shape and I was going to smoke it. And Justin's like, boy, if you want to smoke that, you better be prepared to not be tasting anything for the next couple hours because uh, this thing's strong. This thing's strong. Yeah. This thing put some hair on your chick. <laughs> uh, the Deliverance by <laughs> Black Label. <laughs> I actually heard it on the radio. They actually played it on sat- satellite song. radio. Dueling banjos. Marissa, I was I was talking to Marissa. I'm like, Marissa, this is a great song. She's like, what is this? I'm like, Deliverance, Deliverance man. Come on. That's a bird of mouth, boy. He got a little pretty mouth, ain't he? What you doing here, boy? So yeah, the Deliverance by... So Deliverance, strong ass smoke. And then they sent us an exclusive, very limited stick right here. Hashtag exclusive. So, hashtag exclusive. <laughs> I forgot about that one. That's another random hashtag. Uh, this is so, this is a sister company, or I guess you call it a child company because the sure. parent company is Black Label Trading, but this is Black Work Studios. Um, the Killer Bee, the Swarm Cameroon. Killer Bees on the front. Wu Tang reference. Wu Tang. I didn't say it verbatim, but you get the point. I got you. Very exclusive only, I think 500 boxes made, and you have to buy 10 boxes as a store in order to get them. Mm -hmm. So, he sent us all those. And you Uh, can get them at CigarPipes.com. Which leads us into, why am I putting this one back? I'm going to be smoking this one. No, you're smoking that one. But Eric, since CigarPipes.com sent us all these cigars, why don't you tell them about today's sponsor? (sighs) Roll the ad. So this week's episode is sponsored by CigarAndPipes.com. We teamed up with Cigar and Pipes in the past, and we're doing it again. They're a great company. They're a great website. And now we're here to offer you an exclusive offer. So we created an exclusive link that's only available to you guys, the BDPers. And not one, not two, but three exclusive samplers, which we're going to go through right now. So as you know, we're smoking a Black Label Trading Company cigar on this episode. So we teamed up to give you two exclusive samplers. Eric, what are those? First one, Black Works exclusive sampler. And the second, 
Black Label Trading Company exclusive sampler. So one sampler has Black Label Trading Company and Blackwork Studios. There's two different options. You can check them out on the link. The second sampler is an exclusive Blackwork Studio five cigar pack of the Killer Bee, the Swarm Cameroon. Killer Ooh. Bees, we on the swarm. Killer Bees, we on the swarm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, what we brought you here all for, what we're very excited about, is the Burndown's own exclusive sampler through CigarPipes.com. Yeah, buddy. Let's get right into what these cigars are. First cigar, Blind Man's Bluff by Coldwell. The second one up is the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos 2015. And then another Burndown favorite, the Oliva Series V Milano Figurado. Then we have the My Father, the Judge. That's the Avo Maduro. The God of Fire, Anniversario 2017. And then last but certainly not least is the Ashton VSG. So there you have it. Seven cigars, Burndown Elite cigar sampler only available at cigarandpipes.com click the link in the bio go get yourself a sampler pack what are you guys waiting for it's only exclusive for you guys the bd peers so go check them out and go get it and enjoy yourself yeah so cigarandpipes.com check them out they got great stuff and especially uh our own burn down, burn down sampler, sampler which is F fire. F -f 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 fire. It's fire. Oh, come on. I mean, go you go check the link out. Go check out Cigar and Pipes to Get yourself a burn down sampler. Get yourself some of those swarm Cameroons. I mean, that sampler alone is well over a hundred under well over a hundred bucks. I think he sells it for like Less than a hundred bucks. Yeah, I think it's even less than ninety. Yeah, it's like, I think it's eighty something. Yeah, I think like eighty eight, eighty nine dollars. So it's fire. Oh. So go get it. It's um, definitely fire. But you know what else is fire? What we're drinking today? Oh, give me a hell yeah, hell yeah! Can I get a hell yeah? That's exactly. If you know that reference, you obviously know what we're drinking. Three sixteen, baby. Play the freaking Stone Cold's clip right now. Play it. Hell yeah. If we had more, I would love to freaking get the, the beer and just do the stone. I would do it. If we, I would if we had two each, I'd be doing it. I sent I sent it to my friends and uh they're like, dude, if you're not drinking, if you're not doing the Stone Cold Steve Austin, don't even don't, don't even, even drink it. Don't even he's probably my he's my favorite wrestler, I think. Him and the rock, definitely. Him and the rock. Stone Cold Steve Austin was he was was no he wasn't candy ass that was the rock was candy ass right mm -hmm. yeah I'm like smack down your candy ass yes but what what was some of um, Stone Cold's like iconic um, yeah. sayings uh, what <laughs> what what <laughs> what <laughs> what that was, that was he was that. just such a he was just such a badass. Like he was just an all American badass. Didn't give a fuck. Just I loved him. I loved him. Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, he, him in the in the Grown Ups with Adam Sandler. Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. But he was him and The Rock were the guys I loved growing up. And now he made his own beer. Surprisingly, it's an IPA beer, which I did not expect. But I was expecting it to be like a freaking Bud Light or something. Yeah. yeah. Like some kind of light beer, right? But no. Whew, my God. The Broken Skull. So this is El Salgundo Brewing Company. Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA. Now, this Damn. thing is legit, and Justin's never drank it. I drank it last week for the first time playing golf. Got a little tuned up on the golf course. A little tuned up. And I had some leftovers. So I said, uh, obviously, this is what we'd be drinking on an episode of The Burn Down. So Broken um, Skull. <sighs> Broken Skull Indian Pale Ale. And uh, yeah, I'm legit. excited. I'm excited to try this. You were, you were you know, boasting this one up, if that's even a word. Uh, it is a word. Building this one up. Sure. 
And I want to freaking light this cigar up. I want to pour this out. I want to try this. But before we do that, why don't we show the people the new camera the angle? The new camera <laughs> angle, baby. We're we're upgrading. We getting better. We upgrade you. Let me upgrade you. Oh mm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we got a new camera angle. We're supposed to have three, but um, we got two for now. But uh, yeah, it should be exciting. So hi everyone over on that hi side, guys. over there. Hi guys in the center. Oh, over there too, straight ahead. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this parent going. Let's spark it up. Let's talk it out. Let's burn it down and pour it out. I like it. Candles? No, nah, I think we're all right. So we got that one there. We got your shit that's like going to start a fire in the fucking pool house here. <laughs> Just let it go. That'll be fine. All right. So. Hold on. What happened? <clears throat> oh. Before we drink. We got Oh, we, let's talk. And I said before we drink, we'll, we'll play it as we fucking cheers. Oh, we got it. Yeah. So. Cheers to oh, not well. well, cheers to the burn down. Cheers to cigar and pipes.com. Thank you for sponsoring this episode. Cheers to all of our fans, our followers, our we people, lo- our people, BDPers. We love you guys. Good looks. And cheers to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah, brother. Wow. Wow. Oh, cut that. You think Stone Cold was disappoint? In the words of Brother Cigar, this beer is wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Dude, how delicious is this beer? Holy shit. You only brought... Two of them? Oh god! Because I know if we had any more, we wouldn't be making it out of this pool house. Oh god! If we if we if we had more than that, oh goodness. We this episode, we have no idea where this episode would go. Oh, well, the first thing I know we're talking about is that we're going fishing at the end of the month. Yeah, buddy. Bringing Sean. I mean, not you're not Sean. Bringing Justin. <laughs> what? <laughs> bringing Sean. <laughs> bringing Justin with my family on a nice. Montauk, Long Island, out east fishing trip. I'm excited, man. I've never been fishing, like fishing, fishing. I've done is, fishing off of a dock yeah, as a little yeah. kid. I might have gone one time, but I was never really big into fishing. Been on plenty of boats, just not fishing. Yeah, this is this is official out east deep sea fishing. Yeah, I'm excited. Could see some dolphins, could get a shark. Fuck, imagine reeling in a shark. Yeah, baby. Dude, that'd be... I'd be playing the Stone Cold theme song. I'd be real in that dude, it gets, <laughs> dude, fishing, like, de- like ship, uh, fishing for like big fish, like deep sea fishing, it gets super tiring. Because sometimes it's not like you know you're bringing in a rinky dink rainbow trout. And you just gotta go. You gotta. It's like a lot of no, you a lot of work. How many times you've been fishing? Are you a big fisherman? I, I mean, I, I I wouldn't say I'm a big fisherman, but I like to fish whenever I can. I mean, I went this summer, didn't catch shit. <laughs> not even a nibble which is usually how it goes right that's the first time that's ever happened i went i went off the coast of uh rhode island i was out in westerly rhode island and we did some trolling all day not even ipa a... <laughs> no no beer that time oh there was beer yeah but we did trolling all day and if you don't know what trolling is yeah, trolling. i was gonna say what's trolling? trolling is when you just have all the fishing uh, rods up like on a stand. Oh, you, and you just, just let the cast out and you drive around. And, just, and whenever okay. one bites, you pick up and, and bring in as opposed oh, to just okay. one person. So you just let it sit, drink, and hang out. And when something bites, like, oh, okay, now yeah, fish on, fish on, fish on. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> Everybody fucking drops their beer. Bro. Well, no, you don't drop your beer, yeah. but fish on, fish <laughs> on. But uh, yeah, so I went there. Funny story, actually. I Tell went, me. I went with my my girlfriend, her co- her two cousins, um, and. They have never been deep sea fishing as well. I was the only one that's been. 
So I was I was pumped up because I'm like, I love fishing. I love to go anytime I can fish. So we woke up crack ass at dawn because it was about an hour because they live in Connecticut. So it was about like an hour or so drive to the dock. So we got up at like 3.30, 3 o'clock. And we didn't go to sleep till like 1.30, 2 o'clock. So we got like an hour oh, of sleep. Oh, jeez. I mean, we got there, we got we got up to the house late, and then we just like to hang out. So it was like, well, why the fuck are we going to go to bed if we have to wake up in a couple hours? So anyways, we get out there, and uh, the girls wanted to take Dramamine because they didn't want to get seasick. Okay, no problem. And whoops, they wanted to, they <laughs> they said, you know, uh, Eric and Sean, uh, you guys take them too. And we're like, oh, okay, well, I've been fishing a bunch of times. I've never gotten seasick. Her cousin Sean was in the military, went to the Navy, lived in a submarine for 10 years. I'm like, he doesn't need gravity. <laughs> he don't need it. He lived on he the ocean. He's good. <laughs> he's on, he, he is the ocean. He's good. <laughs> so they made us take it anyway. They're like, take it. And we're like, uh, okay. Fuck that. I ain't taking no shit like that. So we took it. The whole day, we're in and out of sleep. Everyone's sleeping, eating food, sleeping. Oh, look, a shark. We get up, look at the shark, fall asleep. Wake up, eat the food. I mean, we're like, there's no, like, we're not catching any fish. Like, this is bizarre. So, day goes by, and I'm like, well, I, well, during the day, actually, I was like, why am I so tired? I'm like, I've been on no sleep before. I've been on two hours of sleep. I'm like, I'm like, I'm I a can, trooper. I yeah, got this. I can make it through the day. <laughs> and everyone was like that. Everyone was just passing out. So, by the time we get into the dock, the captain was like, uh, you guys took non drowsy Germamine, right? Germamine, right? And I was like, girls? And they're like, uh, it says less drowsy. And he's like, oh, my God. Well, of course you guys were sleeping all day. <laughs> well, duh. And we're like, you told, us, we told, you told us to take it. We didn't want to take it. But if there was any day to be drowsy and falling asleep on a boat all day, it was that day. That was the day. Because we did not get anything. And uh, kudos to the captain because he felt really bad because he's never had that happen before. He gave us another trip to go. So we just went like in the inland part of rhode island and caught some other fish but uh it was still i mean any day even if you don't catch fish around the water you're out on the water in the middle of the atlantic on a beautiful day um it's fun but but now on montauk every time i went to montauk which is out east if you guys aren't familiar with long island you look all the way if you're looking at a map it's the right side it's where the fork is on long island it's all the way out there towards the atlantic ocean south fork south oh yeah south fork sorry um well, no, it's the furthest. South Fork is, I mean, if you look at the furthest point, south is furthest than yeah. north. So we're both right. Yeah. So uh, it's fun. And, I, and I've always caught fish out there. So yeah, my sister's my sister's done that. Um, she likes to do that. So it should be a good time. I'm excited. I'm not going to take nothing. I'm taking Dramamine or no, nothing. No, 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 no. I don't get seasick. Like I said, I've been on boats before. I'm good. I'm, yeah. Cause I'm not even going to risk it because then next thing you know, whatever the hell I took, that's what's causing me to be sick because it's not sitting. Fuck that. I'm going to go in normal. Mm. If I get sick, you go over the side, you fucking man up. And just do your business. And just do Handle it, your mud, boy. Handle your mud. You know what we forgot that we've been trying to start to do? Yep. Quote of the day. <laughs> yep. We did. So whose turn is it? I think, it's, I think you did it last time, right? You did, it was the first time we did it was with you. First time we did it was Cigars on a Budget. It is you, so drop some knowledge on people. Drop some fucking knowledge on people. Yeah. Damn, quote of the day. I was not prepared. I have a bunch of quotes on my phone if you need a reference. Um, But I can certainly think of one real quick. Let's Give me it. a second. All right, quote of the day. All right. Let's hear it. Quote of the day. Every adversity... Every failure, every heartbreak carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. Who said that? Well, that sounds like a Napoleon Hill quote because uh, I've the, he says something similar in Outwitting the Devil. So it has to be him. It's Napoleon Hill. Think and grow rich. Bam. Wow, that was a good guess. Say it again. Every adversity, every failure, every heartbreak carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. That's so true. So basically meaning... Um, Every failure is not really a failure unless you make it a failure. Exactly. It's not a failure unless you quit. Or unless you accept it. Unless you accept it. If you learn something from it and move forward, exactly. it's not a failure. Right? 
You have to fail in order to succeed. It's, like, it's that gif. It's that gif. It's not a failure unless you fail. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's not, you, you, don't, you don't accept the failure because, you know, we've had little failures with the, with the burn down here. Of course. But, and we didn't, we didn't accept it. We just said, all right, what are we going to do to make it better? Or what are we going to learn from this? And boom, there it was. There was somebody said something once. I, I think I found it on YouTube. But it was, they said to fail forward. Right or okay. to fall forward, yeah. meaning if you're going to fail something, if you fail and learn from it, or if you fall down but you're moving forward, at least you're moving forward. Yeah. Instead of going backwards, if you don't learn anything and you do the same mistake twice, then you're going backwards. But if you learn something from the mistake, you learn something from the failure, then you move forward and you can continue to grow in success. Boom, Absolutely, man. It's not. It's not. It's about not accepting it. You're not accepting the adversity. You're not accepting the negativity. You're not accepting the failure. You're just going to say, not up in here. Not up in here. Not up in here. Exactly. So, boom. Quote of the day. Love it. We'll come back to it at the end, which I think I read. You, right, read you start it off, then I read it to, to yep. send the people out. We have to make it a point to continue to do this because it's yeah. very good. We're both inspirational. We're both positive, uh, mindsetted people. That's the word, mindsetted. Um, and we want to bring that. To you guys. Yeah. And if you guys follow us, you know, we always like to inspire people and motivate people and push people to, I don't want to say push, but motivate you. Guide them. Yeah. Guide you, motivate you, inspire you to push yourselves to do what you want to do. So, quote of the day, that's it. Eric will read it later on. But back to the episode. Back to fishing. So, uh, I'm excited for you to get the full-blown deep sea out east of long island fishing deep sea fishing so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be we're gonna be on a uh shrimp boat <laughs> a shrimp boat shrimp boat shrimp stew shrimp salad shrimp and potatoes shrimp burger shrimp salad we're gonna be on a big boat all i know is that it's gonna be it's gonna be a man day it's gonna be me you my two brothers my uncle my dad a lot of testosterone. Fishing for the boys. Wishing with the boys. And you know, we'd be drinking a couple beers. Beers for the boys. When I say a couple, I mean a lot. A lot of beers for the boys. Gonna be having a couple of cigars. When I mean a couple, I mean a lot. Cigars for the boys. So it's gonna be a hell of a good day. Hell of a good. Hell of a good day. It's like a hell of a good dip. It's gonna be a hell of a good day. Hell of a good day. You know what that reminds me of? What does it remind you of? When I was editing uh, cigars on a budget, uh-huh. and we talked about t shirt time. <laughs> t shirt time. Uh, oh. When I was researching that, Paulie D was burgers for the boys, burgers for the boys. Oh yeah, burgers for the boys. Burgers for the boys, burgers for the boys. <laughs> you know, burgers for the boys. He's the man, <laughs> dude. He was a fucking lunatic. I watched. I that. Loved it. I watched the my girlfriend and I. We watched a whole Jersey Shore series from start from season one to last season during the quarantine. And let me tell you. It was great, dude. He's it's the same. It was the same stuff every single yeah. episode. Yep, yep. And I don't know why back then it didn't seem like it. But every watching, single episode, they get drunk, they get in a fight, they hook up, they get drunk, they get in a fight, they hook up, they have drama in the house, they get in a fight, they hook up. Yep, they get like it was the same shit. Yep, but like they almost get fired from the job. Yeah, <laughs> someone breaks up with somebody. Snooky gets punched in the face. Ronnie and Sam are fighting. Ro- oh, Ron. <laughs> Ron, stop. Stop. Ron. Stop. Ron. Stop. Stop. Bro, I remember it being caught. And it's funny because it, no, it, was, it was cringing watching them. It seriously is. I watched one episode because I think it was on. My sister was watching it. And I saw one episode. It was a coaster that got stuck to oh, the bottom of the glass. I was going to say, that's a new one. And I'm like, I can't believe I watched this shit. It was so cringeworthy. I'm like, these guys, because a lot of those guys were, I mean, they're, I think they're our age, right? They're in their 30s now, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit older. Probably a bit older. And I'm like, I couldn't believe them. I'm like, this is what they do? Wild. I'm like, wild. It's funny as hell, though. Because watching it now, you look back and like, what the fuck? This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. This is so, so stupid, but so bizarre. Ron, stop. When he when he when he takes the couch and just throws it out the window. Daddy, you want to f- it? 
we run upstairs. Sammy's like a spider monkey. When he takes all her shit and throws it outside. Remember when Mike headbutts the wall and like gives himself a fucking oh concussion? Oh my god, when they're in Italy. <laughs> and he's like, come on, bro. Stop, and he goes, he has, he's like, uh, 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 and falls. I'm like, bro, that is hilarious. Dude, I loved how Paulie D was like, he was just the coolest guy. But never, never really started shit. Like he only, he only started shit. When it was, like, it got to the, that level where he's like, all right, enough is fucking enough. Like, I didn't do shit. I didn't do anything. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. He was always cool. He was always cool. Reminds me of me. That's, like, how I'd be. Yeah, just cool as a cucumber until something pops off and it's like, you're accusing me of whatever. And you don't, it's like, yo, motherfucker, I did not do that. But cool as a cucumber until my, it gets to a point where it's like, all right. My favorite quote from Paulie D is when... uh they're in Italy, and, the, and Dina like wants to hook up with Paulie like really bad, like really hook up. And he's like, he's like, Dina, if we weren't friends, I'd knock the dust off of that. You know what? <laughs> Dina, I would knock the dust off that if we weren't friends. Just saying. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just dying. I have it like saved in a Snapchat because I think it's so funny. He's like, he just says it like, Dina, if we weren't friends, I'd knock the dust off of that. You know? <laughs> I'm like, bro, that's so funny. He had so many. Just the things that popped off his head that were hilarious. Like when the guys would, um, what was the one with the chapstick? Chapstick and push ups oh, or fist bumps, push up, chapstick. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah. But I like the one when he, he made it up with, uh, like he would see the, the guys or like one of the girls would give two guys the number and they both show up or something or like one of the girls had a boyfriend and the boyfriend called and like one of them got busted and he was just literally sitting there. And he's like laying on the couch and he sees like the guy come in. Busted! 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 <laughs> Just prank war champion! Busted! Prank war champion! Or the, oh yeah, wake up, yeah. Oh yeah. He was the best, man. He was the, he was hilarious. I almost saw you kuka. <laughs> I used to call it a kuka. I'm like, what the hell is that? Is that where I came from? Cause I don't I, know. Oh, God. I've heard that, I've heard that been used before. That's hilarious. Dina, I'd knock the... If we weren't friends, I'd knock, I'd the, knock dust the dust off that. Oh, God. Uh, Yo, so, solid smoke. Yeah, so I knew we were being we were smoking something heavy today. Um, again, from CigarAndPipes.com, our boy Joe. So, when I had... I had these in the fridge. I knew I was giving you... Like, we're going to be drinking this regardless. But then when you said we were smoking these, I was like... Damn. As, what do you think it is? Ample amount of smoke. Ample. My favorite... Again, it's... When the smoke oozes out of the top, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautifully made cigar. The tobacco is not tightly packed. It's just right, and all the stuff elevates through the top. It's got oh, the beautiful. legs. It's got the legs, as we and call it. And you had like a little bit, like the cap was a little bit, but it's still smoking fine. Oh, yeah. I, I, come on. I am the cigar repairman, man, man, man. Repairman, man, man, man. man, man. You know what that's from? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, uh, no. I probably, no. I, I think I do, but I can't. Recall. All that. Repair, man, 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 man. No? Oh, you have to Google and throw in the clip oh, to remind man, yourself. Man, man. It was on I'll all drink, that. I'll drink for that one. Yeah. That was a classic 90s reference. But all I remember is she's all that. Brock! Brock! This is my song! <laughs> Go, DJ! Brock. So, for people who can't see, we got some additions to the room. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, dude. Over yonder, we got... <laughs> you ever see, like, in a movie when it's, like, the self-portrait of yourself? A self-portrait of yourself. Got you. <laughs> I know like, exactly. I would have said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> a self-portrait of yourself. We both were thinking it, and you just happened to be the one to say it. <laughs> a giant self-portrait. It's like when a rich person has a giant self-portrait of themselves. Well, that's what we got of us, me and you, our classic intro picture. And uh, what's the size of it? So this is a uh, three foot by four foot, I think. Damn. It's like it's it's a big fucking po uh, picture canvas. It's canvas. Yeah. But this was a fan a fan mail fan fan mail fan. I guess it's a fan art fan yeah. gift. Um, my uh, girlfriend's sister and her husband are. Huge fans, huge fans of us. Shout out to you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, baby. Um, huge fans of us. They think that we're hilarious. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. 
and they wanted to get us a gift. So they got us this big ass canvas framed and it was sitting in my dining room. People wanted us. They said, you should just put that right over your fucking mantle. I was like, how boss would that be? You come into my house, you sit down at the dining room table, have dinner as a picture of me up on my freaking fireplace. Big ass picture. Boom. But we said, no, we got to put that in the stew. So it's in the stew. Takes up the whole wall. I mean, talk about a confidence boost. Thanks. Damn, we look fucking good, though, too. It is a solid picture. I mean, God. I mean, you, we showed them a picture of it. But if you pan over to the left of that, we got our sticker board up there. So shout out to all you BDPers, all our fans. We appreciate guys. We love you guys. If you have any stickers, uh-huh. send them over our way. DM us. We give you the address. You send them. You go up on a sticker board. Like our girl, the Queen Cigars, did because we got two of hers on there. So shout out to Boom. the Queen's Cigars. And then we got a couple mafioso pictures up top. We got so these were three pictures that I had gotten for Christmas once, and I had I forgot about them. They were in my uh, they were actually in my record box where my records are. And I'm like, oh shit, dude, those are mafia movies. We got Scarface on one, smoking a stogie. Stogie. We got in the middle all of the mobsters from all the mobster movies: Goodfellas, Bronx Tales, Casino, Scarface, all of them smoking stogies. Al Capone and even made an appearance. Oh, yeah. And then the same thing on the left. A bunch of mobster movies. I have that one, too. And we got added in there is uh, Sopranos and Godfather. And uh, John Gotti. And John Gotti. And guess what? Even which is funny because he's not even in like... It's not really a movie. It's like, yeah, they have all of the mobster movies and they have the characters. And then just John Gotti. And then John Gotti. So he must have been a... The guy who made it must have been a fan of John Gotti. I mean, I'm not mad. I mean, he fucking... He belongs there. I mean, it's a mobster Come on. picture. Come on, man. We're doing it. Throw him in there. But it's funny because Scarface is always considered, a, like, always in the, the the mafia movie web. And it's not even, like, really a mafia. He wasn't in the mob. He was no. just a coke dealer. He was just a immigrant from Cuba who made it big in the coke game. He was a drug lord. Yeah. And he made the world his. So he was. I mean, the, world the is two yours. of those kind of get lumped together. Yeah. Um. Because like in Goodfellas too, the mob they were running uh, coke. But yeah, you're right. He wasn't in the mob. He was just. It wasn't a, a mafia movie. It wasn't he was a, a drug mob. lord. Yeah. But still, I mean, Scarface is a great movie. <sighs> Say hello to my little friend. Fuck Espero Gomez. And fuck, fuck the Diaz the brothers. <laughs> Do you know what a hossa is, Frank? It's a pig who don't fly straight. <laughs> oh, how you do that thing with your tongue? Hey, Frank, you want a job? <laughs> Well, I like the one who goes, that's the that's a great line. That's a great he line. Goes, hey, man, you got a job. Hey, man, you got a job. I remember uh, one time I got I did get a job, and someone sent me that video. They're like, hey, man, you got a job. I like the one where he's laying in the uh, in the, um, tub. tub. He's like, fly, Pelican, fly. And then he goes, you know who I trust? Me. That's who. <laughs> oh. Screams out. I don't trust nobody. You know I, I think we watched that at Cigar Fest last year at the house. It's a great fucking movie. I love that movie. It's a great fucking movie. <laughs> so it's too bad we haven't gone to Scarfest yet this year. Yeah, but I know cry tear. Mm. But what we will do, wherever you're looking, is we're going to get the house and we're going to go anyway and make our own fucking cigar fest. Whether or not the festival is on, we're going to we the, got house. the house. Though we're going to the house, I didn't. I mean, I didn't get it because we didn't pick a weekend. But we're going to pick a weekend. We're going to we go. The, but we got credit for it. Got the credit for it. Yeah, so. We're going to go. We're going to party. Maybe we just go to the casino. Maybe maybe golf. Check out the house. Test the waters. Test the waters, yes. And then if it's good, we can go back to the same house. Dude, it is smoky in here. You know what that means? Where's our smoke eliminator? Oh. This one? Yes. Or the other one down there on the bottom. Or this. Without. Which we thought you put in... Oh, I guess you can put it in the in the unit, but... You put this in your... Humidors. I mean, uh, ashtrays. Ashtrays. It smells so good. I just want to... It does. Should we light the smoke eliminator and see if it even fucking works? Yeah, do it. Do it. I'll light it. I'll put it right here. Light it up, will you? Light it up, will you? Light it up there, will you? So. What else? So, we, we talked about it before, but we have my great-grandfather's Augustino Vincenzi painting. That's such there. a fucking great name. Augustino Vincenzi. It is a great name. He met, a, he met a lot of cool people back in the day. A lot of cool people. Yo, it's going to be hotter than them out here because we got candle one, candle two, candle three, 
And smoke. That and dude, that instantly smells good. Whatever that is, that is, it all smells good. The whiff out. What a ooh. You see that earwig right there? Hey, yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing. I don't ew, it's creeping. Yeah, it's all good. Creep. Oh my mm-hmm. god, that thing is disgusting. Yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing. Ew. But I noticed ew. I have a a hole in my little microphone here, I guess from an ash. I must have bumped into it. Oh yeah. And uh, it burned. Burn, baby, burn, burn, baby, burn. Yo, don't go on our freaking. Uh, uh, don't uh, go on our thing. Don't. No, fuck you. Get off the fucking. Go back. Go back where you came from. Yeah, it's just an earwig. Anyway, sorry. We got earwig, spiders, crickets. Had a nice cricket hopping around here ah. before too, but don't want to just get out the shot, man. I mean, you could chill. Just go chill out of the camera. Okay, if you, got, ask. If you want to get in the camera view, you got to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Eli the Earwig. <laughs> gonna, nice to see you. I was going to say Ernie the Earwig. Ernie the Earwig. Hey, uh, what do we got here? We rambling too long? No, we good. I mean, okay, hold on, ask. we what had an earwig and we have a beer and one of our famous quotes is, nothing like an earwig in your beer. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we are on like 42 minutes, but we uh, rambled for a while because we were trying to set stuff up, taking pictures, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're thing, right. Blah, so blah, we blah, probably, blah. yeah, we got some time. What time, what time we have, though? Oh, 5.04? <sighs> Dude, we Gucci. We're good, man. So anyways, uh, we had a hurricane a couple we weeks did. ago. We did, yo. We haven't talked t- about that. We haven't talked about that. Well, can I tell you the story? Can I tell you the story? Strap your boots and get in get in for a ride because we're going for a Justin Heisig story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Buckle up, baby. Cause we going in for a ride. <laughs> you might need you might need two seatbelts for this yeah. one. So let me tell you. Oh damn. Let me tell you. So we had a hurricane, Hurricane Isais, I think it was called. Anyway, hurricane came through the the uh, northeast, and Long Island was out of power. Some of the northeast, Long Island was out of power for a while. Peace. Some people are still out of power. Um, this was a week ago, about to the day, and. Area I live in has lots of trees. So there was trees going down all over the place. There was actually a tree right down the block that trapped a car. There was people waiting at a red light and a tree came down and just fucking trapped the car. Didn't yeah. crush the car, but like you ever see um um come on, come on, come on, Jurassic come on. Park? Yeah. Remember when they um when the car falls out of the out of the tree and it like lands right on oh, top yeah. of them but doesn't crush them but just lands on th- that's what this tree did it landed on the car oh, wow. so the people got out but the car was stuck there it's crazy that's wild. so anyway we lost power okay now you guys know because of that one film that we, the one episode we did we lost power but it came back on right we have a generator yeah figures the one time that the whole power goes out all the whole town the generator doesn't turn on i'm like what the fuck why does the generator not turn on go figure dead battery Fucking one time that we need it, dead battery. So we're out of out of power for a couple of days. Call the guy up. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, we don't service that model anymore. You guys installed it, but I don't just we don't service it anymore. What the fuck? What kind of customer service I'm like, is that? So where where do you recommend anybody I can go to? Ah, I just check their website. That's what they send me. So finally, we find a guy comes comes by. You wonder how some people are in business. Legit took him ten minutes. It's like replacing a fucking car battery. Took the terminals off, pulled the battery, put the new one in, terminals, hit the run button, done. It's like, I could have fucking done that, okay? But We don't service that model anymore? Dude, I don't know. Couldn't touch it because if you touch it, you void the warranty, whatever. So, finally get power back. Good thing it came on because the power went back out like a day later and the generator kicked on, so it was good. We're thankful for that. Day later, my girlfriend comes home from work. She goes, "Um, what happened? Where's the hot water? Like, what do you mean? She goes, there's no hot water. So I took a shower an hour ago. There's plenty of hot. She's like, no. Go down to the basement. Boiler's blinking. Mm. Blink, blink. Error code. Mm. Check the error code. Fan blew. Got to get a guy come for the fan. Got to get a guy. Got to get a call up. And, call up at the company that installed it. We don't service it anymore. What is with that? Dude, I'm serious. Like, what do you mean you don't service it? What happened to the years of business they got from installing devices in places and all over the all over the Long Island? I have no idea. How do they have that that steady business? And again, I asked them, do you have anybody that you can recommend? Obviously, you've installed this, and now your customers are going to ask to service it. Which usually people do. Which usually, like if I installed something and I no longer service that model, I would at least have a guy and call call up somebody, hey, listen, do you service this model? All right, great. Listen, we don't do it anymore, but I'm going to send you all of my customers. You want to just give me like 10%? It's called... A referral. Yeah, and work out like a business deal with them. Listen, I'll send you all of my customers. Give me like a 10% kickback for giving them to you. But, Logical. Logical. Right? You'd do the same thing, right? 
They didn't do that. Oh, you got to figure it out. Luckily, we knew somebody called him up. He came, checked it out, had to order a fan overnight, fixed the fan. Now we got hot water. One last thing to add to the story. Now, finally get the hot water back. Great. Go to log on the next morning. Internet's out. The fuck? We're trying to shoot that day. Apparently, because really? of, because they're re, they're like fixing all the power in this neighborhood, that internet's going in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm like, what the fuck? So today, a week later, is like the first day we got everything. Go figure. I mean, it makes you it makes you think I mean, well, the shit you take for granted, like hot running water. I was taking cold ass showers, internet just like boop, whatever you want. Yeah. But anyway, that was my hurricane story. What happened with you? My story was. I was working at my office, and the man said, everyone go home. Supposed to get a hurricane. Everyone the man. Leave. The man. But you know the man? I will be the man. I'm not the man yet. I'm in the man. I'm the man other, other places. I remember your parents used to tell, don't let me get the man. Oh, that, <laughs> always. I was always, always afraid of the man. <laughs> you get a restaurant, start acting out. Don't let me get the man. I'm like, Who's he's got to come through that door. Who the fuck is it? Who is the man? I remember I, that so vividly. So I have a question that I'm going to ask. So before we get back to your story, but I want to ask you. So as a kid, what did you think the man actually looked like? I just thought, because it was like, I always remembered being by like the swinging doors where the, where the servers were coming out of. And I would I would just imagine like this big burly dude coming in hot through those those doors. Like a like, mountain man. Yeah, and just coming and just yelling at me. That's what, that's what I imagine. Because I can only picture, like, whenever they said that, kids just, like, come up with some shit. Oh, yeah. What is this? What does he actually fucking look like? Is yeah. he, like, is he scared? It was, always, it was always the man all over the place. It didn't have to be, like, at a, a regular spot. It was always, I'm going to get the man. It was always, like, the cringe, like, the tea. Like, the I'm going to get the man. Be and like, they never said they wish. Mm. Be like, Eric, stop. Eric, stop. Eric, I'm not going to ask you one more time. Eric, stop. Eric, I'm going to get the man if you don't stop. And I was like, mm. Dude, that's that's a that's and it's a tactic I will use in my yes, future children. because it never puts it on you. It always like defers it to some. That, that's a good way of putting it. Maybe that's why I love my parents though, because I never I never looked at them like oh they yelled at me in public. I was always worried about getting yelled at the man because it's not them. It's like listen, I don't want to do it, but I'm gonna get the fucking man. I don't know if I can do it, but I, I you know listen, I let you do it all day, like but I can't. I'm gonna get the man. He's not gonna be happy, but yeah, I can like a real pain in the ass. I don't want to do it. I love you, but I'm gonna get the man. Don't yell at the messenger. I'm just the messenger. Okay. <laughs> The sign clearly says, you act out, you get the man. So so anyway, okay. So you're at work, and the man said, go home. The real man, the boss man, was like, hey, everyone head home. <sighs> no no, no use in staying here. It's going to get crazy. I was like, okay. So I start driving, and uh, yeah, it's, it's getting a little shaky. It's not really raining. It's really dark, but I'm driving on the Hutchinson Parkway. Ann Hutch, the Ann Hutchinson Parkway. The Ann Hutch. Can I pause you for one second? So I learned this trick. I'm going to see if it really works. Mm-hmm. So when the cigar is out, to try purging into the cigar okay. to see if it relights it. I'm going to try it, see if it works. Let's let's put it to the test. And it's super smoky in here. Oh. Oh. I see some smoke emerging. Could be. Could be. Keep doing. And you keep. Wow. All right, that was a live test, bro. It works. That, I mean, it was kind of weird watching you, you know, do it, but <laughs> I was just watching you. All... Well, let me get my cigar blow job quick. Yeah, that's what exactly it fucking like. works, bro. That was pretty sweet, and that was not tested. That was pretty sweet. So, if your cigar goes out, try to purge it first, which means blow into the cigar as opposed to taking in the smoke. Blow into the cigar, and you're good as freaking new. Wow. wow. That was pretty sweet. That was pretty cool to see. Love it. So You saw it live on the burn down. You saw it live on the burn down. Yeah, baby. So, and Hutch. So, uh, yeah, I'm on the Hutchinson Parkway, which is driving up to West Shasta. And right, I'm crossing over, into the, I'm crossing over the Bronx, and there's a huge tree on the parkway. And I'm like, huh. and I'm FaceTiming my buddy. I was I I was I had my butt like my stand and my buddy from Texas called me so I wasn't really FaceTiming but I had him as like a phone call. So and I switched him to turn him around to he he was like my dash cam because I'm showing I'm like, dude, look at all this crazy shit that's going on. And I'm like, look at this tree here. And he's like, oh my God. So then we're talking and there's traffic. So then I'm like, forget this traffic. I'm gonna go the back roads, the back roads. And of course, I'm not the only one who thought going the back roads, and it was backed up 
through on the side street. So I showed him. I go, dude, you ever see the movie Twister? And he's like, yeah. Um, the the golf gas station. The sign. Yeah. The sign is spinning. The sign, really? The sign is spinning. <laughs> I guess. And I'm like, dude, check this out. And he's like, bro, that's not good. I'm like, no, I gotta get the hell out of here. Get the fuck out of here. So then I go through some neighborhoods, and the one neighborhood road to get back onto the the main road it was already closed off it had caution tape on it there was already trees down i'm like jesus so then i'm trying i'm trying i'm like winging it i'm not even using gps i'm just trying to wing it and dude there's trees everywhere there's dead ends i'm like dude i feel like i'm in a movie because all the streets are abandoned i can't drive anywhere and i finally i get uh, you're like stuck yeah i'm stuck so whatever i make my way now i'm in like my neighborhood i'm still taking back roads in my neighborhood and I'm not, and I'm, I'm focused on driving, but my buddy starts freaking out. He's like, dude, dude, watch out, watch out. I'm like, what? And there's a tree swaying like on the curb. But it looks like it's going to fall. No. He's like, dude, shit. How, freaking out. I'm like, oh, shit. And I, 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 I got a race to get yeah. under it. Oh, Jesus. And you know what? Like you're in an action movie or it something. It felt like. I guess I can trust myself in kind of like sticky situations because I didn't focus on it. I was like, holy shit, I got to get around it. And like, I didn't even get like nervous. Luckily, obviously I passed it, but I'm like, dude, I didn't even see that. He's like, dude, that was like in a movie. And it was just, it was just funny. Because, like the buildings falling. And yeah. Gotta, uh, speed up. Get yeah. under it. So it was just funny. Because That's crazy. It wouldn't be a You almost died. Yeah. Uh, luckily. Bro, I'm, I'm here. What the fuck? So it was it was just a funny and it's just a funny story because if I was by myself it wouldn't be a funny story but I have my buddy from Texas who probably has never seen shit like that and uh, he was my dash cam I literally had him flipped over and he was just looking at everything I was looking at and it was funny so I made it so we out here still, we out here cut still trying to purge that cigar yeah it's like after I purge it it's not really uh it's not really staying lit not staying lit I'm gonna try it again though but. Staying lit, though. Okay. Well, anyway. Good cigar. Very good cigar. I'm out of I'm out of my my Steve my Steve uh, Austin beer. So I'm gonna have to just touch this up a little bit. Mm. Um What you got for me? What do I got for you? We are at fifty three minutes, so we're probably like twenty-five minutes. Yeah, we're probably probably we'll probably just cut it. Cut it, cut it, cut it. You got to cut it. Well, since we'll call it a day, while Justin is lighting back up a cigar, we're going to finish this. But if you guys could so kindly, so kindly. Wait, 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 wait. You got to end it before you tell them where to go and all that stuff. All that jazz. All that jazz, all that good stuff. Well, I could either tell them and I kind of just send them off their merry way. Because, why not? Because you got to do the quote of the day. Yeah. Yeah, but you want to tell them what to do first, and then send them, them off with the yeah. I was gonna send them off oh. with the quotes. That's the last thing they think about. You know what I mean? Oh, my bad, my bad. Okay. So as you were, before I got rudely interrupted, it wasn't rude. No, I know. I said, "Excuse me." You did say, "Excuse me." You did say, "Excuse me." You did. Actually, no. I said, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa." But yeah. So you rudely interrupted. So I rudely me. interrupted as I was. Anyways, as you were, go ahead. just shut up. I'm gonna get the man. <laughs> I'm gonna get the man. If you guys could so kindly, uh, you know, share it with one friend. You got a friend who likes cigars? Say, hey, I listen to this podcast. I watch this podcast. These guys that burn down, I follow them. Just share it with them. They might like it. They might not. But you know what? Give us that opportunity. That's all we ask for. That's it. That's all we ask for. Well, I mean, we also ask you to, you know, subscribe, like, follow us on YouTube, follow us on the Instagram, follow us on the podcast. On Facebook, Facebook, on Twitter, on Twitter, but I mean, really, just share it with somebody because sharing is caring. Amen. You know brother. what I mean? Amen. So I'm gonna end you off with sharing is caring. Thanks for sharing, and uh, I will send everybody <laughs> off with a quote of the day by Napoleon Hill, and it is: Hold on, it is. <clears throat> Every adversity, every failure, every heartbreak carries with it the seed of equal or greater benefit. Take that to the bank and use it. That's Justin. I'm Eric, and we're the Burndown. Thank you, as always. Let's do it. Prost. Prost.